It was Simon Pagenaud who was on the unfortunate end of this ridiculous role during practice for the race at Mid-Ohio. The Frenchman had the worst moment in his entire racing career while coming towards turn four. Flat out at almost 200 miles per hour, he hit the brakes, but nothing happened. And to make matters worse, he was approaching a downhill runoff. He went sideways and his car flew into the air and made a horrible impact off the ground, sending it into one of the craziest barrel rolls ever. After his car was ripped to pieces from the huge impact, he was thrown around like a rag doll, and his car hit the wall after rolling over countless times. Oh! Big trouble. That is Elio, oh, oh sorry, Simon Pagino barrel rolling. I had no break. I'm okay. I had no break. Oh, that's great to hear that he's okay. The Indy 500 winner missed the rest of the season due to a concussion, but was lucky to avoid further injury. This next moment is one of unbelievable drama, yet complete calmness at the same time. During the 1995 Rally Ireland, the entrance took on a stage along the roads of Crossgar County Down. One driver and navigator pairing were searching for glory and taking on the rally in their trusty hatchback. Spectators found a great spot to get close to the action in the gateway of a house, but on this occasion, they got a bit closer than they would have liked. When approaching the gateway, the car took the jump on the road at over 100 miles per hour, and when it landed, the car's steering broke and locked in one position, sending them hard left into a wall at crazy speed. The photographer moved just in time and the car missed him by the tiniest margin ever witnessed. The car smashed the wall in an almighty blow, but somehow the photographer was completely unharmed. This is without a doubt one of the luckiest moments in rallying history. Throughout F1 history, safety standards have been improving, and thankfully so, because if these cars weren't as strong, we're not sure these two drivers would have survived this outrageous crash. During the 2002 Austrian Grand Prix, drivers Nick Heidfeld and Takuma Sato had one of the biggest coming togethers ever seen in Formula One. Austria's Red Bull ring has a habit of producing big smashes thanks to several big braking zones. And on lap one of the 2002 visit, this dramatic collision at turn three shook the racing world. As Nick Heidfeld approached the corner, he hit the brakes and suddenly found his car to be completely out of control. He veered towards the apex and went headfirst into the pack of cars who were turning into the corner and smashed straight into the side of Takuma Sato at full speed. Sato had no warning that he was about to be hit and took the full force of the impact of Heidberg Sauber, which was traveling at astronomical speed. Heidfeld battles for fifth, but the German is too eager on the brakes and the repercussions are horrific. That sends shockwaves down the pit lane. In motorsports, it doesn't get much better than a tight, hard-fought battle on the last lap, especially when it's for the lead of the race. And to make this one even better, Nicola Prost and Nick Heidfeld were coming up to the very last corner of the last lap, fighting for victory in the first Formula E race ever. Nick Heidfeld made a move to the inside of Prost, and out of nowhere, Prost moved across and drove straight into Heidfeld in a very questionable defensive move. The two made contact and Heidfeld was sent flying uncontrollably towards the wall. He hit the apex and it sent him flying into the air, and he instantly smashed into the barrier at full speed while airborne. In an absolutely horrific crash, his car stopped suddenly and it was smashed to pieces, with onlookers fearing the worst. Into the last corner of the race, Heidfeld goes to the inside line and they make contact and they're both off! And that's an accident for Nick Heidfeld. He has gone off the circuit. The two of them come together in the final corner. Luckily for him, he was able to climb out and was unharmed after this nasty crash. First up is this unbelievable crash from Greece this year, where a crowd of spectators got off extremely lightly after this huge mistake. 
Georg Linnamai was pushing his car to the limit on this dirt stage with extremely treacherous surroundings. One small mistake and the trees are waiting. And unfortunately for Linnamai, he made that small mistake and it had huge consequences. Taking too much speed into this corner, his car left the road and began rolling almost instantly. It headed straight towards the crowd, hurdling past spectators at outrageous speed. The car narrowly missed people who were forced to duck and run for cover, missing some by mere centimeters. The car made huge contact with the trees, and Lin Namai and his co-driver suffered a huge impact. This next crash is courtesy of a road course, Sonoma Raceway in California to be exact, and is a look back at one of the scariest moments of Nelson Philippe's racing career. Philippe spun on this blind crest and his car skidded down the track, coming to rest at the worst possible place right at the apex on the racing line. EJ Vizo came over the hill next and hit Philippe's front wing, causing some damage and leaving everyone thinking how lucky they were that Vizo did not hit him harder. But then came Will Power. The Aussie came at tremendous speed and had no chance of avoiding Philippe, and smashed straight into the side of him, causing a horrific crash. Philippe's car was absolutely destroyed from the huge impact, in one of the most horrible side-on collisions you will ever see. There aren't too many crashes in which a rider manages to do a front over end cartwheel, but Jesse Ruling did exactly that in this spectacular crash at Virginia International Raceway. Ruling was battling his opponent Sean Thomas, and their bikes were side by side at extremely high speed on the straight. Ruling was fighting hard to overtake Thomas's bike on the outside, but he got a bit too close for comfort and disaster struck. The brake lever on Ruling's bike made contact with Thomas's bike, and both riders went down in dramatic fashion. Ruling's bike flipped front over end and made huge contact with the ground, being completely smashed and thrown across the track wildly. Oh, clipped. Oh, that is, that is big. And one was a guy catching the back end. The guy that was in front had no idea it was coming. Yeah. Thomas had minor injuries from this crash, but both were lucky to avoid anything more serious. What transpired in the Rally Ypres 2023 for driver Stefan Lefebvre was far crazier than he would have liked. So let's take a look. During the high-speed tarmac stage, Lefebvre and his co-pilot were barreling down the road at crazy speed on this narrow stretch of road. But out of nowhere, disaster struck. Amid a quiet afternoon in the Belgian countryside, Lefebvre's car hit a bump and lost control, flipping the car instantly. It sent it into an unbelievable series of rolls and was flung off the road, all while turning over ten times before coming to a rest. Bodywork came flying off the car, with parts narrowly missing spectators. But luckily, both driver and co-driver were uninjured. It was a reminder that no matter how harmless a rally stage looks, danger is always just around the corner. Now for number 6 on our list, let's take a look at a very scary crash that you have probably never seen before. The 1982 French Grand Prix took place at the Paul Ricard circuit. Yes, Paul Ricard before they covered it in blue and red runoff, and spectators were hoping to get close to some great racing action, but some spectators got a bit closer than they would have liked. The 1982 F1 season was quite the nightmare of a season, with many huge crashes occurring around the globe. And one of the most dangerous crashes in Formula 1 history unfolded when Mauro Baldi collided with Jochen Mess when battling intensely at high speed. Baldi went for an overtake up the inside at the end of the straight but made contact with Mess mid-corner and flipped his car instantly. Mess's car skated straight towards the barrier at insane speed upside down. and 
and hit it incredibly hard. It pierced the fence and went into the grandstand where spectators were standing. Debris went flying and the car erupted into flames, with onlookers fearing the worst. Somehow, nobody was injured in this truly unbelievable crash. It is fair to say that Formula One and everyone involved dodged a disaster that day. Another unforgettable crash happened in the 2021 Dariah e Prix, and it doesn't get much scarier than this one. The Daria e Prix was one of the most highly anticipated races on the calendar, with drivers looking forward to taking on this exciting street circuit. But driver Alex Lynn didn't know that he was about to be taken on the scariest ride of his life. That's because the race was the scene of one of the most dramatic crashes in Formula E history. While driving for Mahindra Racing, he was involved in this horrific collision. Lynn was trying to overtake Mitch Evans when the two made contact. The impact was so severe that Lynn's car flew into the air, flipped over, landed on its roof, and smashed into the wall at crazy speed. The camera crew barely caught the crash as it happened so fast. Miraculously, Lynn was uninjured in the crash, but it's one he will remember for a long time. In this year's edition of Rally Monte Carlo, the high-speed tarmac stage was treating fans to some exhilarating action, and Johnston's run was looking good, right up until this moment at the very last corner. He tucked this high-speed right-hander a bit too fast, and couldn't manage to make the rear end come around in time, and the consequences were huge. He hit a cabin and absolutely wrecked the rear of his car in a massive crash, spinning the car violently as it slid up the road. Both him and his co-driver Alex Kuhurani felt the impact, but avoided any serious injuries. Finish 53, that's minus long. Oh, fuck. Well, just when you think that they can't get any scarier, have a look at this. The 2010 Indy 500 was a thrilling race, and on the very last lap, Mike Conway attempted an overtake on Ryan Hunter Ray, but it went horribly wrong. He drove into the back of Captain America's car, which instantly sent him flying into the air backwards and heading straight for the wall. He hit the catch fencing and the wall at the same time at a terrible angle and it shredded his car to pieces, firing him back out onto the track upside down. With nothing but the cockpit itself surrounding Conway, his car spiraled across the track, barely missing Hunter Ray's head as it landed. Both drivers were incredibly lucky to avoid serious injury after this brutal wreck. Number 8 on our list involves this very painful-looking flip in the AMA Superbike series for rider Estefano Mesa, who caught serious air in this wild ride. During this race at Ridge Motorsports Park, Estefano Mesa was knocking on the door of a Supersport podium until this unlucky moment. The crash happened at this tricky corner when Mesa was running in second position. He lost the front of his Titler's Cycle Racing Kawasaki and fell straight off his bike. It cartwheeled and Mesa rolled along the ground alongside it at crazy speed in a very nasty series of rolls. Mesa was bruised and hurt but was not seriously injured. His team, Titler's Cycle Racing, was quick to give credit for the safety equipment, which prevented what might have been very severe injuries. It was amazing to see how much the safety of modern equipment protects today's riders. By the way, if you'd like to see more of the best motorsports content just like this, please consider liking this video and hitting subscribe for more quality content. Okay, back to the video. Now, instead of driving headfirst into a tree, Molly Taylor went headfirst into something a bit different in 2018. Let's check it out. The Australian rally driver was partaking in her home event, Rally Australia, when she had this almighty shunt. Near New South Wales on the second stage of the rally, Taylor was in hot pursuit of the stopwatch in her Subaru Impreza. While coming over a blind crest, the car landed awkwardly and snapped, sending her straight towards an unfortunately placed hay bale. She hit it at crazy speed head-on, instantly wrecking her car and punting the bale deep into the forest due to the sheer force of the impact. It sent the car spinning and twisting, coming to a stop almost instantly. It was one of the highest speed crashes from the entire event, and luckily both Taylor and her co-pilot Malcolm Reed were uninjured. 
This next crash is one of the worst ever in Formula 1. It came courtesy of Robert Kubica, who at the time was an extremely promising young driver who many expected to become a Formula 1 world champion one day. However, his career was derailed slightly in 2007 after this monumental crash at the Canadian Grand Prix. Driving for BMW Sauber, he was approaching one of the largest braking zones on the whole circuit when his car left the track at over 180 miles per hour and hit a concrete wall head first. It ripped the front off his car and fired him back across the track with the car on its side, straight into another concrete wall on the other side of the track. The front of his car was ripped off completely, and you could see Kubica's feet through the broken monocoque. Miraculously, he survived and even came back the next year and won the race to take his maiden F1 win. People in the automotive world are familiar with the name Carroll Shelby, the car designer most famous for the AC Cobra and the Ford Mustang. But what you may not know is that his son Patrick Shelby was a race car driver. Patrick competed in IndyCar, but this moment in the 1986 race at Laguna Seca wasn't one of his finest. He was racing side by side with Mike Buckingham and made a mistake by moving across the track, hitting Buckingham's car in the process. Shelby got fired straight into the guardrail at unbelievable speed, and his car almost disintegrated on impact due to the severity of the crash. Safety features were not the finest back then, but he somehow avoided serious injury in this extraordinary smash. Motorcycle riders often experience extreme ups and downs in their careers, from disappointing lows when things don't go well, to exhilarating highs that come with claiming success on the track. And one rider that knows all about this is Josh Heron, when he experienced both emotions within seconds of each other during this session at Ridge Motorsport Park. Racing in the Medallia Superbike Series, Heron was pushing his bike to the absolute limit during this qualifying session and managed to take pole and break the lap record with a blistering lap. But just corners later, his fortune turned around. He lost control of his bike in an extremely high-speed corner and came off his bike at full speed. He skated across the ground and took a seriously dangerous trip through the grass, bouncing and rolling at ridiculous speed before coming to a stop. How he managed to get up and walk away from this one is almost unbelievable, but it's all thanks to the modern safety equipment that these riders are lucky to have. Let's head back to Zlin for this next rally moment that went horribly wrong. During the FIA European Rally Championship round of the Barum Czech Rally in 2019, driver Nikolai Gryazin made a bad mistake. After driving his Skoda Fabia RS on the limit throughout the treacherous town, he took far too much speed through this tight corner and ran wide, and waiting for him was a badly placed metal fence. Gryazin smashed it at huge speed, and it spun his car instantly in dramatic fashion. It destroyed the whole rear section of the car. The leaving the wheel and bodywork lying on the road. Luckily, he was okay, and both he and his co-driver walked away unharmed. The weekend of the 1994 Imola Grand Prix was a tragic weekend for Formula One, and is unfortunately best remembered for the deaths of the legendary Ayrton Senna, as well as upcoming talent Roland Ratzenberger. But a crash that is overshadowed by many from this awful weekend was the one involving Pedro Lamy and JJ Lechto at the very start of the race. When the lights went green, Lechto's car stalled from fifth position on the grid. Pedro Lamy was coming from the back of the grid and was driving at significant speed by the time he reached Lechto's stationary car. With no time to react, he drove straight into the rear of his car and it instantly sheared off two wheels that flew over the fence and into the crowd. Lamy's car spun and hit the wall hard, with his wrecked car eventually coming to a rest at the side of the track. Luckily, both drivers walked away without any serious injuries. Another famous name, and perhaps the most famous of all, is Mario Andretti, known for his influence in taking motorsports from being a relatively unknown sport into the mainstream. The legendary driver had been retired for six years, but in 2003 he decided to chance a comeback, 
at age 63 while practicing for the 2003 Indy 500. Mario was minding his own business at over 220 miles per hour, but his car had other ideas. He hit debris from another incident, and his car suddenly went airborne out of nowhere, and Mario suffered an outrageous crash, with his car flipping six times. While running at 220 miles an hour, and he hit some debris, and then he held on. He rode out one spectacular crash. Mario had been doing very well until this crash, but he was very fortunate to avoid injury in this shocking shunt. This qualifying session for the Moto America Twins Cup race went downhill, literally, for Hayden Schultz after this hectic crash. Schultz was riding his bike flat out in a very fast, downhill section of the track when he was taken aback by a very nasty surprise. The rear end of his bike started to slide, and before he knew it, the bike high-sided and he was on the ground. He smashed the tarmac with serious force, with his shoulder taking most of the impact. He rolled down the track, tumbling and turning in the process. And to make matters even worse, his bike followed him and hit him extremely hard on his helmet in a horrible impact. Miraculously, Schultz was uninjured and was able to stand up and walk away from the crash. Let's step back in time for a moment and have a look at a huge crash that took place in the 1986 Rally Wales event. This driver was pushing his Toyota to the limits on this outrageous mountaintop stage, which had absolutely no safety features to prevent a driver from crashing off the mountain. And unfortunately for him, that is exactly what happened. The car completely ran out of traction and veered off the hillside backwards, tumbling and rolling a crazy distance down the stony soil. It fell so far that it could no longer be seen by the camera. The scene at the bottom of the hill showed a completely wrecked car car, and somehow both the driver and co-driver got out and walked back up the hill. Pile-ups thankfully don't happen too often in Formula 1, but when they do, they can be a completely spectacular and bizarre sight. And that's exactly what happened at the Belgian Grand Prix in 2012 at the fan-favorite spa franc track. The catalyst for it all was Romain Grosjean and his Lotus Renault when he drove Lewis Hamilton off the road and onto the grass before they even got to turn one. Hamilton lost control of his car as a result and caught the back of the Lotus, sending it airborne. Both of them smashed into Fernando Alonso's Ferrari in a massive shunt, barely missing Alonso's head. Multiple other drivers were damaged in the process, but Alonso came off worst as he was fighting for the championship, and this race essentially ruined his year. Point scoring consecutive finish dashed within 260 meters here in Belgium. Safety car is coming out. But luckily, nobody was injured in this insane first corner pileup that will be remembered for decades to come. Let's stick with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for this next one, for what is definitely one of the most disturbing crashes the track has ever seen. In 2015, James Hinchcliffe was practicing for the Indy 500, and everything was going smoothly for the Canadian until it wasn't. While entering Turn 3, Hinchcliffe's front right suspension decided it had enough and completely collapsed, sending James directly into the wall at over 230 miles per hour. It made a sickening impact against the wall, as flames instantly erupted from the car in a horrible turn of events. James was rushed to hospital and his heart flatlined, but he was brought back to life just in time. And in one of the most incredible stories ever, he returned to the Indy 500 the following year and took pole position. This next crash happened at a track that is known for its high-speed corners and for the commitment that is necessary to master it, but this crash happened at one of the lowest speed sections on the track. One of the most horrifying incidents that occurred in the 2010 Superstock 1000 race at Silverstone involved French rider Sylvain Barrier, who miraculously survived this appalling accident. 
His BMW S1000RR motorbike failed suddenly as he entered the big braking zone for the Vale chicane. Not a good place to have a failure. It caused the bike to jolt and shoot Barrier straight into the air, and he landed directly on his head as he snapped down onto the track. No, it seized. Oh, it seized. seized. Must yeah. have done. Ah, oh, that, that's completely seized as that. No question of that. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, an engine failure that caused that for sure, Jack. His body convulsed as he bounced and skidded towards the gravel, as another rider narrowly missed running him over. Somehow, Barrier managed to walk away unscathed. And while we're talking about unbelievable crashes, here's one that you've definitely never seen before. In 2005, this ambitious driver was taking on a countryside stage rally with his Peugeot 206 rally car, and it's fair to say that he got it a small bit wrong approaching this high-speed section. He drove far too fast and dipped the car off the road, and it couldn't have happened in a worse place. He smashed a piece of earth that sent him straight up into the air in an unbelievable way, spinning and flipping the car in mid-air. It then landed on its roof in a shocking fashion and the car was completely wrecked when it came to a stop. Is this a contender for the highest a rally car has ever been during a crash? Let us know what you think. The 2016 Australian Grand Prix was a hectic race to start the season. Remembered primarily for this absolutely crazy crash involving Fernando Alonso and Esteban Gutierrez. During the race, Alonso was using his McLaren Honda to hunt down Gutierrez Haas and was directly in his slipstream. When Alonso pulled to the outside to attempt the overtake, Gutierrez braked harder than Alonso expected, and he drove straight into the back of his wheel. Alonso lost control of his car and hit the wall hard, instantly smashing his car and sending him into the gravel. But that wasn't the worst part. The gravel flipped his car, sending him barrel rolling sideways and twisting in the air like a toy car. Alonso took a huge hit and his car was completely shattered. Amazingly, he was able to get out of the car himself, and although he missed the next race in Bahrain, he avoided any serious injuries in this outrageous crash. More super speedway mayhem occurred in Kentucky during the 2007 installation of the high-speed oval. Racing legend Dario Franchitti finished the race in 8th place, and while he wasn't happy with that result, it was only a small disappointment in comparison to what happened after the race had finished. As the checkered flag was waved, Dario didn't realize the race was over and drove straight into the back of Dan Weldon, sending him somersaulting through the air in a spectacular scene. He hit the wall at incredible speed and skated along the barrier for what must have seemed like an eternity for the Scot. Vamos a ver. Ahí está amarillo ya. Ahora, ¿por qué sale ese amarillo? Porque terminó la carrera. Porque ya terminó la carrera. Entonces, ¿por qué Franchitti no disminuye la velocidad? He took responsibility for the crash, and it's fair to say that it wasn't one of his finest moments. During the 2023 Moto America Supersport final qualifying session, the heavens opened and soaked the track with absolutely torrential rain, making the conditions completely treacherous to ride in at flat-out speeds. Easy Racing's Edgar Zaragoza was caught out by the slippery surface, and he didn't get it easy. The lack of grip caused his bike to wobble dramatically and spit him off straight on the ground at crazy speed. He slid along the track alongside his bike and slid straight into a metal barrier in what looked like a very painful hit. Thankfully, he walked away from the crash, as it could have ended a whole lot worse. We all know that part of the allure of rallying lies in its unpredictability and inherent danger. However, nobody would have expected a crash like this one to be possible. During the Helen Dorn Rally of 2013, one fan managed to catch this crazy crash on camera from driver Harry Kleinian. Kleinian was driving his Porsche 964 RSR and made a massive mistake by locking up his tires under braking, and it happened in the worst possible place. 
Klein Yan couldn't slow down in time and smashed in a concrete barrier, lifting the poor RSR onto its side and snapping both wheels off the left side of the car. It broke two barriers while flying over them, and unfortunately for him, there was a river on the other side. His Porsche was sent flying upside down into the water in one of the most spectacular crashes ever seen. Just imagine how shocked you would be to find yourself upside down and in the water at the same time. Luckily, the driver and co-driver managed to get out uninjured. And talking about high-speed crashes, it doesn't get much worse than this one. Once upon a time, Formula One visited the States to race at the famed Indianapolis Motor Speedway, or IMS. Best known for hosting the Indy 500, IMS also has a road course inside the oval that utilizes part of the high-speed speedway. And that's exactly what F1 raced on. Unfortunately for some drivers, they learned the hard way what it feels like to hit the concrete wall at close to 200 miles per hour, and one such driver was Ralph Schumacher. While entering the final turn of the road course, he suffered a rear left puncture and crashed backwards into the concrete heavily. His car was instantly smashed to pieces and careered back onto the track, sending debris everywhere with other drivers narrowly missing him. The impact was so severe that Schumacher was briefly knocked unconscious and was placed on a stretcher to be taken to the medical center in the ambulance. Luckily, he did not sustain any major injuries in this brutal smash. It's back to street tracks for this next shocker, which was courtesy of Felix Rosenquist's slightly wonky Arrow McLaren car. The Swede was having an uneventful race around the fan favorite and now unused Belle Isle track in Detroit, but that all changed in dramatic fashion. At one of the worst places on the track for a failure to occur, Rosenquist's McLaren had, to quote the team, a mechanical fault. But it just so happened to be one of the scariest mechanical faults ever, as the car accelerated at full speed straight towards the wall. He was sent headfirst at disturbing speed into the tires, and he hit them so hard that his car lifted them out of the way and proceeded to smash into the concrete wall behind them. The force was so strong, he moved the concrete wall back a few inches and landed on top of the tires. Oh, big crash! Felix Rosenquist! Oh my goodness! I bet I know where that is. I think that's onto the back straightaway. And what we've seen in years past is a driver hitting the right front on the concrete wall at the apex. Felix was stuck in the car for far longer than he would have liked and missed several races due to concussion. But he was lucky to even survive after this horror crash. Motorcycle racing on street tracks can be one of the most exhilarating and downright crazy spectacles available to motorsports fans. So, when riders take on the annual Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix on one of the tightest street tracks in the world, chaos is sure to unfold. In 2019, the race was darkened by this breathtaking pileup that involved six riders during the final race of the weekend. It happened at the Police Bend, the gear circuit's notorious corner which often sends many riders off their bikes. After the first half of the race, which had already been full of crashes, a massive shunt unfolded at the police corner involving Daniel Kruger, Erno Costamo, Michael Sweeney, Philip Crow, and Derek Shields. The riders caused a huge pileup with some very nasty impacts taking place on the narrow streets. Oh no, and it's happened again. That's another red flag. This is where the, oh, this is where the uh, touring cars and the Formula 3 cars have all of their mishaps. Kruger, Costamo, and Shields were all taken to hospital but managed to avoid any serious injuries. This crash from Rally Argentina in 2016 was a display of rally car acrobatics of the highest degree. Finnish driver Yari Matti Latvala was taking his Volkswagen Polo rally car to the limits of speed and traction across the dusty Argentinian back road. But unfortunately for him, the car was not completely up to the task, as his suspension broke just before he took a high-speed corner. All while he was leading the rally, the Polo's front left wheel came loose, sending it flipping and rolling over multiple times at seriously high speed. The spectacular crash was caught by the 
the helicopter, and the onboard footage shows just how violent it was from inside the car. He and his co-driver Mika Antila were fortunate to survive this massive shunt with no injuries. This next crash happened at a track that is more known for its tight corners and precision driving than it is for its outright speed, but that doesn't mean that the crash was any less scary. On the streets of Monaco in 2011, Sergio Perez was piloting his Sauber during Saturday's final qualifying session and was pushing hard to try and prove himself as a young talent. When exiting the tunnel and approaching the ever-daunting chicane, Perez lost control and hit the inside wall at over 175 miles per hour. The front right wheel was instantly torn from the car. Suddenly, Perez found himself as a passenger and smashed the barrier side-on at insane speed. The deceleration was extremely severe and Perez suffered a concussion. He was removed from the car and the track was closed for 40 minutes to clean up the wreck. Perez learned the hard way how the streets of Monaco can bite in this nasty accident, which he was lucky to escape from without any major injuries. There's often a debate in motorsports between which is better, rolling starts or standing starts. And while IndyCar currently uses rolling starts, once upon a time they tried the opposite. And it's safe to say that this one in particular was a little messy. In 2014, Sebastian Saavedra qualified on pole for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course race, giving him a fantastic chance at the win, but he blew it before he even got going. He stalled on the grid right as the lights went out and left himself stationary in the worst possible place. Carlos Munoz drove straight into the back of him, wrecking both cars. But a split second later, Mikhail Aloshin caused an even bigger wreck when he plowed into the stationary car in a horrific impact. Debris was sent flying as Saavedra's car was lifted into the air due to the sheer force of the hit. It was one wild ride for the three drivers, but luckily none were seriously injured. Let's take a look at another very scary pileup in a high-speed corner. At the fan-favorite Road Atlanta track, Caleb DeKirill was attempting to overtake Hobbs for the lead of the race and was alongside him coming into turn one at high speed when disaster struck. He was squeezed to the inside of the corner, his bike high-sided, and he was flung from it instantly. The third and fourth place riders Jody Barry and Hayden Schultz also fell straight away as a result of the crash. Bikes went flying and all three riders took nasty slides into the gravel trap, narrowly avoiding their bikes as they tumbled past them out of control. Oh, he slowed down there too. Oh no! It takes out takes out Jody Berry with him, three of our top four down, Standish. And out of nowhere, seventh place rider Toby Kamsuk also fell and entered the gravel trap at insane speed. He flew straight into Schultz, hit him on the leg, and then hit his head off the fallen bike. America is not best known for its rallying scene, but that doesn't mean there aren't fierce competitors willing to take on the treacherous stages that the country has to offer. During Stage 10 of the 2016 100-acre Wood Rally America, this driver was taken for the ride of his life during this insane rollover crash. The Subaru Impreza was driving at almost top speed when it hit a hole in the road, launching it into the air and causing a crazy spin. It rolled countless times and landed on its roof a long way from where the crash started. After a few moments, both drivers got out, or while the car was still on its side. Clocking in at number 15 is his absolutely shocking crash from the spa Francorchamps during the 2001 Belgian Grand Prix, where the racing guards kept these two drivers safe after this catastrophic moment. Spa has long had a reputation for being one of the most high-speed, challenging, and potentially dangerous tracks on the Formula One calendar, and on this day in 2001, the race was overshadowed by this horrific crash between Luciano Burti and Eddie Irvine. As Burti lined up an overtake on the inside of Irvine at Blanchimont, the highest speed corner on the entire track, Burti made contact with Irvine and both cars instantly lost control. He slid into Irvine's path, went straight off the track, and smashed the tire barrier head on at over 180 miles per hour. As Alain Prost watches as Luciano Burti gets too close to Irvine with the worst possible result. 
The impact was so severe that Burti's car disappeared in the tire barrier and required a team of marshals to get him out safely. Irvine's car was wrecked, but he climbed out and helped the marshals pull Burti out of the wreckage. Alessandro Zanardi, or as he's better known, Alex Zanardi, was well known for his fearless driving style, often pulling off moves that seemed impossible. Unfortunately, he was involved in many large accidents in his career which are well documented. But the one that you may be aware of was his monster shunt from the weekend of the 1993 Belgian Grand Prix. During practice at spa franc -Conchon, Zanardi was driving on the limit through the treacherous Eau Rouge, attempting to find the limits of his team Lotus 107, when out of nowhere he lost control of his car and flew off the track, smashing the outside wall head-on at unbelievable speed. This huge impact caused his car to shatter, erupt in flames, and spin violently as it broke into pieces along the racetrack. It then landed in the gravel trap on the other side of the track, and when other drivers tried to avoid the sudden debris, it caused Senna to crash too. Zanardi was sidelined for nine months after this horrific crash, but luckily recovered and went back to racing. The Portland Grand Prix is known to have the potential to throw a massive metaphorical spanner in the works of the IndyCar Championship every year, as it is one of the last races on the calendar and features a tricky layout. And in 2018, it did exactly that. Just after the infamous Turn 1 chicane, all hell broke loose when James Hinchcliffe spun and collected multiple other cars. Marco Andretti had an awkward encounter and ended up being thrown over another car and flipping over into the dirt. Championship contender Scott Dixon got caught up in the melee as cars went flying, narrowly missing helmets as they clambered over each other. Somehow Dixon escaped with his car intact, but the others weren't so lucky. As I mentioned earlier, Texas Motor Speedway has a tendency to produce incredible side-by-side -side action at seriously high speeds, and in 2017, it did not disappoint. Halfway through the race, James Hinchcliffe was battling fiercely with Tony Kanaan, deciding to go three wide around the high-speed banking. But the fun faded quickly when Kanaan drove up onto Hinchcliffe and knocked his car off balance, sending him into an uncontrollable spin. Hinchcliffe hit the wall in a nasty crash, triggering a pileup behind as other drivers tried to avoid the carnage. Sparks were flying and flames were igniting as multiple cars smashed into each other, causing one of the wildest moments in recent IndyCar history. That's the big one. Big crash. Oh boy. Hildebrand, Hildebrand Jones, Jones, Hinchcliffe. It's rare that so many cars get wiped out in just one crash, but in IndyCar, anything can happen. This driver decided to take on the Rally Epernay in France in one of the country's own cars, a Citroën C2R2 Max, but through no fault of the car, it didn't exactly end well. The driver hit a bump in this French countryside road, causing the suspension to become unsettled and the car couldn't handle it. It threw him off to the left with severe speed, and before he knew it, he was in the field barrel rolling like crazy. The hatchback flipped and rolled an insane number of times, going end over end and being thrown violently into the air at terrific speed, with one extra crazy flip being thrown in for good measure. The car was completely wrecked, but the roll cage could be seen doing its job, protecting the two occupants from serious danger. Irishman Frank Kelly was taking on his home rally, the Circuit of Ireland, in his trusty Ford Escort Mark II in 2023, and it was all going well until it wasn't. There was a very late call by the co-driver to warn Kelly about an approaching left-hander, so when he reached it, he didn't have time to even think about turning left. The car went straight on at top speed and was launched into a dip in the side of the road. It flipped onto its side and made a crazy impact on the ground throwing it into the air in spectacular fashion. It was one of the most violent crashes from the whole rally, and somehow both Kelly and his co-driver were okay, but the car certainly wasn't. And if you're enjoying this video, please consider clicking like and subscribing for more quality motorsports content.
A terrible pileup at the Monza circuit in Italy occurred on lap 1 of the Italian Grand Prix in 2000. So let's take a closer look. The track is known for having the fastest average speed on the whole calendar, so when crashes happen, they're usually big ones. However, in 2000, the race start turned into what can only be described as a nightmare, when several cars came together at the Della Roggia Chicane, otherwise known as Turn 4. As the cars approached the corner, a crash involving six cars unfolded spectacularly. The two Jordan cars came together, which sparked a chain reaction that involved Rubens Barrichello, David Coulthard, Pedro de la Rosa, and Johnny Herbert. Cars were flying in the air amongst the gravel and debris that were thrown wide wildly across the track. Again, wow! That's the two Jordans and a mega, mega, uh, that's Trulli and uh, French. And there's many cars piling in at the back. Terrible, terrible accident there. And uh, of course, the red flag will have to come out. But miraculously, no drivers were injured in this crazy pileup. And while we're on the topic of high-speed shunts, it doesn't get much scarier than this one. The weekend of the Hungarian Grand Prix in 2003 served up some memorable moments, but none quite as dramatic as this crash that marred the event as a whole. In the most dramatic incident from the weekend, Ralph Furman was approaching Turn 4 in his Jordan during a practice session, when he suffered a mechanical failure at high speed when his rear wing completely detached from his car. The loss of downforce and sudden instability of the car threw him off the track, and Furman completely lost control, spinning into the barrier. He hit the wall hard and skated up the Armco barrier at insane speeds, before smashing the tire barrier sideways in a brutal sideways impact. Furman was forced to miss both the Hungarian Grand Prix and the next race, but made a full recovery and returned to the team. And in 2003, driver Billy Boat found this out too when this mega wreck took place on the famed oval. At the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the outer walls aren't the only thing you can hit. No, there's something a lot worse. Boat lost control of his car while exiting turn 4 and spun uncontrollably, and what happened next was shocking. The pit lane attenuator is designed to improve safety by keeping the people in the pit lane separate from the racetrack, and that's all well and good until a driver plows into it. It's safe to say that Boat would have felt the effects the next morning. When the driver and co-driver pairing of Lee Gotch and John McCarthy entered the East Coast Bull Bars ARC National Capital Rally in 2013, they were hoping to bring their Subaru Impreza WRX STI home in one piece, but the infamous mineshaft stage had a nasty surprise in store for them. As they approached the most treacherous blind crest on the whole stage, the pair took far too much speed and got some incredible air as they went over the jump. They were greeted with an extreme smash on the landing as the car landed right on its nose, turning it on its side and almost rolling over. It's safe to say they won't make that mistake again. Let's stay in Australia for now and go back in time to 1991, where this spectacular rollover took place, courtesy of Carlos Sainz. Senior, that is. The Spaniard was pushing as hard as ever on the dirt stage 14, gaining time and moving himself up to fifth in the standings. But that was all about to change. As he approached this fast left-hander, he was overly ambitious with his speed and sent himself flying off the road. His car rolled like crazy, flipping six times, and if you look closely, you can see Sainz's head hanging out the window and smashing off the ground twice, as the car came crashing down in an absolutely shocking moment. He was taken to hospital for precautionary checks, but he was lucky that he wasn't a lot worse. As we mentioned earlier, the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix at Imola is a weekend that will forever be remembered by motorsport fans for all the wrong reasons, as we lost two great drivers within two days. However, it was very lucky that a third name was not added to that list, as Rubens Barrichello suffered an almighty crash on the Friday that was overshadowed by the two deaths. However, Barrichello's crash was nothing short of horrific. 
As Barrichello was approaching the Variante Bassa corner, his car slid out of control and hit the apex, which catapulted him into the air at over 140 miles per hour. His Jordan instantly went airborne and smashed the top of the tire barrier extremely violently, flipping his car and landing upside down against the tire barriers. He was knocked unconscious and his tongue blocked his airway, threatening his life, but legendary F1 doctor Sid Watkins intervened and saved his life on the spot. The Texas Motor Speedway track produced some unbelievably exciting races over the years, with drivers often racing side by side for prolonged distances thanks to its layout. But with that exhilarating racing style comes extreme danger, something that drivers Joseph Newgarden and Connor Daly found out the hard way in 2016. Connor Daly lost control of his car and had a massive snap coming out of a corner, and unfortunately for Joseph Newgarden, he was driving right beside him. Connor crashed straight into Joseph and punted him straight into the wall at over 220 miles per hour. Newgarden hit the wall at a horrible angle and got turned upside down. His head barely missed the barrier when his car rode along the wall at incredible speed, and when he got out of the car, he couldn't stand up. This was truly one of the most breathtaking crashes in modern-day IndyCar. Another ridiculous moment from the incredible rally days of old came during the Rally Argentina in 2002. This time, it was Tommy Mackinen making headlines for all the wrong reasons when he demonstrated how not to drive a Subaru. Halfway through this mixed terrain stage, it was going brilliantly for Mackinen, who was three seconds faster than his nearest rival in the Peugeot. But he threw it all away at the very last corner with this massive mistake. He clipped the banking on the outside of the road and sent himself airborne, turning the car onto its side immediately. It began rolling uncontrollably, with spectators ducking for cover. The Subaru was seen flying spectacularly over the road at a crazy height in the yeah. At the midpoint of the stage, the Subaru had been three seconds faster than the Peugeot, but then on the very last corner of the stage, it all went wrong in spectacular fashion. It landed in a ditch and was completely wrecked, handing the stage victory to his rival. But luckily, both Mackinen and his co-driver Kai Lindström were somehow unharmed. A driver who is perhaps better known for his stunts off the rally stage than his participation on them is Travis Pastrana, but Travis was a fierce competitor who enjoyed success in many different series. However, one of his less successful days came at the Colorado Cog Rally in 2005. It was round 7 of the Rally America National Championship, and Pastrana was driving his Subaru in Pretzer on the dirt stage. He misjudged a seemingly harmless corner. but. The the consequences were huge. Pastrana's car flipped onto its roof instantly and flipped off the road, and barrel rolled through the field for what must have seemed like an eternity to him and his co-driver Christian Edstrom. The Impreza took a tremendous beating, but did its job in keeping both of them safe. The Brazilian Grand Prix of 2003 is considered one of the wildest and most chaotic races in Formula 1 history. It included several crashes, but by far the two worst ones were courtesy of Mark Webber and Fernando Alonso. As it often does at the Interlagos track, the skies opened and the race instantly became a full wet race. Moments later, Mark Webber sent his Jaguar into the wall, causing a horrible crash. He suffered a huge impact and sent debris flying across the track, including two of his wheels with tires still attached. Fernando Alonso then rounded the corner at full speed and, unfortunately for him, had no time to react to the debris. He drove straight into one of Webber's loose wheels at around 100 160 miles per hour. It instantly snatched the car from Alonso's control and sent him straight into the tire barrier head first, causing a monumental crash for the Spaniard. Oh, and we've got a we've got another car. Alonso, I think we think Alonso's come round and, and probably found race they stopped. Red flag, race has stopped. But uh, and it'll go back. Yes, what, it'll go back one lap. So Martin, um, I have to interrupt you because the Jordan team are bouncing up and down in the pit lane. Oh, we're looking at the images there of that incident of Alonso. He was taken from the track on a stretcher, yet still managed to finish the race in third position. Luckily, neither of the drivers were seriously injured in these truly shocking hits. 
Now let's have a look at a crash that happened more recently, which quickly became one of the biggest talking points of the season. During qualifying for the 2022 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, Mick Schumacher suffered one of the most painful-looking crashes in Formula 1 history. He was attempting to hustle his Haas VF22 into Q1 at the tricky Jeddah street track during F1's second visit to the newly constructed street track. Being the fastest street track in the world, and with the concrete walls so close all lap round, one small mistake can be extremely costly. Suddenly, while on a flying lap, Schumacher lost control of his car on a curb. And out of nowhere, it snapped violently and threw him into the concrete wall at 170 miles per hour. The impact was so severe that one side of the car was completely destroyed, and Mick was unable to get out of the car for several minutes. Oh, what oh. We'll just leave it there as Mick Schumacher hits the wall. Oh. Two tyres coming loose as he hit the wall as well, and that is the second red flag of this session. He was taken into an ambulance to the medical center and escaped uninjured, but was unable to race the next day. That's what happens when your crash registers a force of over 60 Gs. The second crash on our list is one of the nastiest impacts you will ever see. Fellow Frenchman Sébastien Bourdais was qualifying for the 101st Indianapolis 500 in 2017, pushing as hard as he could to set the fastest lap possible. But he may have pushed a bit too hard, because out of nowhere, disaster struck. He lost control of his car at over 230 miles per hour in the middle of a corner, and it sent him straight into the wall head first. His car was flipped over and caught fire instantly, and the impact was so devastating it could be heard clearly on the video. Both in the 231s, the first driver to put any lap in the 231s. So far, trouble! Oh, what a crash! What a terrible crash! Up and over, car flipped. Bourdais suffered fractures to his pelvis and right hip as a result, but was lucky to avoid further injuries in one of the highest speed crashes ever. Next up is a massive pileup that happened in the 2019 race at Pocono Raceway. The three-corner oval isn't nicknamed the Tricky Triangle for nothing, and it proved why on this day in 2019. This pack of cars only got around one corner before chaos broke out, all while traveling at almost 240 miles per hour. Takuma Sato squeezed championship contender Alexander Rossi and caused a huge pileup that also wiped out James Hinchcliffe and Felix Rosenquist. The damage caused was huge, but the drivers were extremely lucky that nobody was injured in this very nasty crash. One of the special things about the IndyCar series is how they race on ovals, road courses, and street courses, and how all three can be just as thrilling as each other. Take this crash as proof. In 2011, Tony Canaan avoided serious injury after this brutal crash, with fellow Brazilian Elio Castroneyes on the streets of Baltimore. Canaan's brakes failed at over 180 miles per hour, and he smashed into the back of Castroneyes in an unbelievable impact. He went flying over Castroneyes' car and plowed through the tire barriers before hitting the concrete wall on the side of the street. Brake failure is never good on a high-speed street track, but on this occasion, both drivers escaped unharmed. Whoa! Oh, yeah. So Tony Kanan literally flew over the top of Elio's car. Another bone-jarring crash at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway occurred in 2015 during practice for the Indy 500, and it was absolutely massive. Joseph Newgarden was finding the limit of his car around the famed speedway, dancing around on the edge of grip, but unfortunately for him, he stepped over the limit, and the consequences were huge. His car oversteered and spun around mid-corner, and with no chance of avoiding the crash, Joseph was flung into the wall nose first at 220 miles per hour. The car instantly went airborne and skated down the track a tremendous distance, all while upside down. He was helped from his car and luckily was unhurt. 
but the same couldn't be said for his race car. Now let's stick with the fan favorite Indianapolis Motor Speedway for this next crash, because just a year prior, Kurt Busch found out why this oval is just so hard to master. The NASCAR ace was trying his hand at the double, where a driver attempts to race in both the 500-mile Indy 500 IndyCar race and the 600-mile Coke 600 NASCAR Cup race, both on the same day. Perhaps all the practice had put Bush off his A-game, but either way, during Indy 500 practice, he suffered a massive shunt coming out of turn two. He hit the wall at unbelievable speed and his car shattered on impact, catching fire in the process. It shed bodywork and even a wheel before coming to rest on the grass further up the track. Somehow, Bush managed to climb out of the car and came back for more as soon as his car was fixed. In case you were wondering, Indianapolis Motor Speedway isn't the only high-speed oval that can cause chaos. Just ask Ryan Briscoe and Ryan Hunter Ray. The pair were racing each other hard at the Auto Club Speedway, affectionately referred to as Fontana, at this barn-burning race in 2015 which many fans refer to as the greatest indie car race ever. But coming on to the very last lap, Ryan Briscoe and Ryan Hunter Ray came together dramatically at well over 220 miles per hour, causing an absolutely spectacular crash. They were forced onto the grass, and Briscoe's car went airborne in the biggest way possible. It flipped and smashed off the ground, breaking apart in what resembled an airplane crash more than a car crash. Debris was littered absolutely everywhere, but somehow both drivers were okay. Sadly though, this iconic track is currently being demolished, but maybe the two Ryans won't be too sad to hear that news. And lastly, we have a bonus crash for this video. It happened in Formula 3, not Formula 1, but it was too crazy not to share with you. In 2019, Alexander Peroni was driving in the FIA Formula 3 Championship in the race in Monza, Italy, when he suffered one of the downright craziest and most terrifying crashes ever seen in modern motorsports. He was coming through the final corner, Parabolica, which is a long right-hander. Peroni was trying to maximize the track with by going as far left as possible, but he was hit with a very nasty surprise when he drove slightly outside the track limits. The track had installed an infamous sausage curb in the worst possible place, and Peroni hit it unknowingly while driving flat out. It acted like a launch pad and instantly fired his car into the air as if it had been shot from a cannon. The car went flying through the air flipping and turning in the air at crazy speed. It traveled as far as the crash barrier, where it made a monumental impact with the catch fencing and tire barrier. It landed horribly on its side, with the tires crushing the car's cockpit and missing Peroni's head by mere centimeters. It destroyed both the fencing and the car in what was one of the most spectacular crashes ever seen. Somehow, Peroni was uninjured in the crash and managed to walk away unharmed. I think we now can show you what happened to Alex Peroni. Oh my goodness me. That is a horrific sight. And last on our list is perhaps the most destructive crash of all. This sickening impact came during the 2005 race at the much-loved Chicago Land Speedway, where the speeds used to get quite literally out of control. Ryan Briscoe was racing side by side with Alex Barron, and when Barron moved down the track, there was nothing Briscoe could do. The two made contact, sending Briscoe skywards over Barron's car and nose first towards the catch fencing. He hit the wall and fence at a horrific angle. His car split in two as it ripped through a post in the fence, leaving a huge hole. And to make matters worse, his car was carrying a lot of fuel, causing it to explode on impact. The cockpit began spinning violently down the track and was narrowly missed by his teammate Scott Dixon. It took Briscoe over two months to recover cover fully from this one, but at least he lived to tell the tale. Now get ready, because we've saved what is perhaps the biggest crash for last. Peter Solberg's incredible wreck from Germany in 2004. The Norwegian was attacking the fierce German countryside stage hard in his iconic blue and yellow Subaru Impreza, but he attacked one corner too hard and it cost him dearly. 
With too much speed through the corner, the Impreza simply couldn't hang on and crashed heavily into the ditch. It instantly shattered the windscreen and caused the car to turn over, smashing every part imaginable as it rolled across the road at high speed. The aftermath provided an incredible scene, with the roof of the car completely caved in. How on earth Solberg and his driver Phil Mill survived that crash, nobody knows, making it go down as one of the most unbelievable wrecks in WRC history. Let us know in the comments which of these moments you thought was the most spectacular, and tell us if we missed any. Please smash the like button and subscribe for more motorsports content. This has been Racer's Reverie. See you in the next video.